We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is the Couples, Couples Academy, Academy Show. Show. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Couples Academy Show. My name is Sasani. And I'm Danielle. And we're here for you. Another great morning, Thursday morning, to talk about relationships. We're tuning in with people all over the world. No matter what part of this planet you're on, if you are married, if you are in a relationship, if you want something better for your life, you've come to the right place. Absolutely. Thank you guys for joining us. Can you do me a favor? Can you make sure that you like, share, and subscribe? Hit that notification bell. That way you will not miss a show. And make sure that you're sharing it with all your friends, your community. We actually are spreading this message to the four corners of the earth. See, we just got to be careful what we say, right? We got to stop saying we want to. No, we actually are that's right. spreading this message to the four corners of the earth. And we're super excited about this weekend because that's one corner that we're headed to. Where that's we right. To we're sign. going to Milwaukee. Well, actually, we're flying into Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. But we're going to Wisconsin to be a part of the marriage getaway. And it yes. is not too late for you to be a part of that virtual experience just go to the link go to the link in the description click on it it's 197 that is all it is to, to have an entire weekend of power packed information experiential learning it's going to be fun and exciting whether you're in the I'm house so or in your house connecting to where we'll be so we want you to do that it's going to be amazing also we're excited because starting on monday that's right that is our new time couples academy ask the ex the experts it's not just going to be Danielle and myself, but it's going to be the rest of our team. Many of you are familiar with Jeff and Lakeisha, but there are others who you have not seen yet, and we're excited to add them into the rotation. So once again, every morning at 9.30 a.m., and then every evening, Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, and we're excited that you all will be a part of that particular experience. Um, listen, 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 we just had an amazing uh, uh, private marriage consensus with an amazing couple they were amazing. who literally left four o'clock this morning. And uh, man, I wish they could stay for three you know more what? days. And I didn't get a chance to actually work with them, but actually connecting with them. It, it's so cool when you meet people and you just click. Like when we went out to eat together, we just clicked. It was easy yeah. to talk to them. They they come. They have such a history and depth in their story, experiences, and it's just awesome to share with people. Just good people. I see our, ourselves being connected for a long time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, That's the wonderful thing about it. We, we we get the chance to meet some great people. But they left a powerful testimonial that they wanted to share with you. To check this out, and then we'll get started with today's topic. Gil Zake from San Diego, California. And I'm Lucy Zakay from San Diego also. We are married. Well, our relationship was non-existing. It was uh, at the front door of a divorce. And uh, we were not communicating. We were not touching. We were not kissing. There was really nothing but um, the conversations we had were about business, were about everyday life, and it was very shallow. And um, we uh, experienced an affair. My husband uh, had an affair with a, a lady and um, I found out about that and um, my whole world caved in and uh, um, we had three days of intensive work here with Hazani and it was just life-saving. It was heart and brain opening. It was receiving each other again and understanding each other. We started communicating from scratch and three days later, it's just a, a total brilliance. We never expected that. I knew there could be maybe um, a chance, but that's minimizing everything. It, it was just the most wonderful experience we had. It was absolutely fabulous. And we're Starting over, we're, we're going to be just fine. So thanks to Hazani, there's not been anything better that I have come across than this couple's retreat. I'm Gil, 
And uh, Lucy's husband, I had a three year affair. I am extremely sorry. And we came to the couple's retreat here uh, looking for healing and restoration of our marriage. And I had no idea that things after three days of intensive work and training that things could turn out as beautiful as they have. My wife wrote me a letter. We, she has never apologized to me in 20 years. For anything. And uh, it was just a, a super breakthrough for me. The innocent party, but yet during our marriage, we, we had issues. And uh, I, I, I was just so happy and so excited about the future with Lucy. And uh, to hear that letter uh, of her uh, apologizing for things that she has done that helped contribute to, you know, the affair that I had. And uh, it's just been wonderful. We I didn't think that anything like this uh, existed or could even exist. Hassani is a very experienced He's had a lot of, uh, many years of dealing with specializing in uh, affairs. And that is something that you just do not find. And I'm so grateful to him. And thank God that we were able to find him. Connect with him. And I call him the marriage whisperer. <laughs> yes, definitely, Hassani is. He's a miracle to us. And every cent that we've spent coming here was beyond worth it. We are gonna follow up with other sessions uh, twice a month for one hour at a time. He is always available to meet your needs and he has a passion for helping couples that have had affairs. Thank you, Asani. Wow. Love it. <laughs> you know what was, uh, it's, it's funny. We did something a little bit different that I typically don't do. We took out a little journal and I said, I want us to write down every mini miracle that we experienced throughout the course of this weekend. Because, you know, we always ask, what's, what's the big goal? What do, what's the big takeaway? What do you want to do here? So after we get what that is, I said, all right, every mini miracle. Because what happens is when you're in that weekend, so much is happening that yeah. you can get lost in the, the experience that you forgot. Oh man, we did that. Oh, we had breakthrough there. And so they were like, man, this is just the first day, the hardest day. And we've already experienced three many miracles in the first day. Wow. Can't wait till tomorrow. And one of those was <laughs> that this, his wife, is, I mean, listen, she came from a family where they do not apologize. Mm -hmm. They do not say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And she, and he said for tw for the 20 year she marriage, said she well. said it, 20 years, she's never formed her lips to say sorry mm -hmm. until this weekend. And he, he was, he, he, he was so, that's what so he was emotional. Talking about because when he was about to give the testimony, he said, there's been so many miracles. He was telling me that I didn't know that that was the big miracle. It's crazy. An apology. Do y'all see the power of an apology? It's like you're holding on to the key, which is the key to the vault of somebody's pain with a few simple words to mm. acknowledge what you've done. Absolutely. Wow. Powerful. Well, I want to acknowledge some people who are joining us today. Good morning, Jewel. Good morning, Gonzalez, Valencia, Josh, Angela, Gorgeous Wells, Jackie, Ang uh, Angela again, LaShawn, Marlene, Ralph, Tint Days, <laughs> so many names. Good morning, Derek Oliver. Good morning, Clancy DDA hey there, Bill Tucker. Fedlina, Sean, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And I think we're going to jump right into the show. Yeah, we're talking about 10 ways to stop obsessing about the affair. Once again, we're talking to the betrayed spouse because there's a healing process that you have to go through. And when it comes to your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, the triggers, that is the longest piece of the journey, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about forgiveness, that's a decision. It starts with a decision. And then you continue to walk in that forgiveness daily. But restoring trust 
and learning how to manage your thoughts and emotions, that's the long journey. <clears throat> and this is where you need the most help. This is where most people are struggling, right? Because they're dealing with all types of things that constantly come inside their head. And we talk about this all the time. If I am the offended, you're the offender, and I'm talking to you about what you did two, three times a day, best believe I'm having conversations with myself at least 30 times a day. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you 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 think, oh, my God, we have to talk about this again. Well, I'm forced to talk about it to myself at least 30 times. Right. A day. That's the overflow at that point when you're actually saying now you're flooding. Yeah. You've been thinking and ruminating Absolutely. on it. And now it's coming out. and I'm throwing it up on you. That, that, and so that's why we want to talk about what do you need to do with these thoughts? Because people have a tendency to obsess, to obsess about what they know, to obsess about what they don't know, to obsess about the details, always trying to figure in something out. They become detectives mm -hmm. and it's like it becomes a new lifelong journey and it can be painstaking because you're constantly living in the past. Yeah. And so we've been talking about this this week, but I want to give I want to reiterate once again, because we have new viewers that come on every day. If you've been in an affair and you want to heal and move forward and you're the betrayed spouse, you're the betrayed spouse. The first thing that you've got to do is that you've got to create a thought journal and write down all of your negative thoughts in four categories. Category number one, what are the negative thoughts you have about yourself? Category number two, what are the negative thoughts that you have about your spouse? Category number three, what are the negative thoughts you have about your marriage? Mm -hmm. Category number four, what are the negative thoughts that you have about the affair? The yourself, because oftentimes it's a blow to your self-esteem. It's a blow to your ego, mm -hmm. right? Your self-worth, your value, you begin to question yourself. And so if you were a positive person, once the affair happens, it turns it on its head and now you're struggling. Right. So what are those, thoughts? write all of those things down. That's the beginning of the process because you need to be consciously aware of your unconscious thoughts, feelings, and behaviors because there's no way you'll ever be able to shift and change things until you know what is happening to you in the moment. Yeah, it's coming into understanding about the story that you're telling Yourself, right so once you have that thought journal now you're aware you can look at those things and then go to number two which is practice the three second rule now we talk about this time release activity where you actually when you're triggered you mm -hmm. sit in the pain for a certain amount of time until you start to lessen that anxiety well this three second rule you can apply it to those thoughts that you're having right when you have that thought journal the three seconds is all you are allowing yourself the time to think about the negative thought so that you can make a decision about that thought and change the thought. So if you have a negative, like Hassani said, if I'm the offender and I have a thought that comes to my mind that reminds me of the thing that I did, I'm thinking about it for three seconds only. That's it. That's the max. Whatever it's saying to me, you're not worthy or you're a cheater or you you just are the hard, most horrible person. Then you begin to change that story and you tell yourself a different story. You change the feeling. You change the words that you're saying to yourself. You come up with a new picture in your head. I'll never forget just learning the process of mm -hmm. shifting it's called um, transmutation <laughs> that's what it's called where you're actually feeling a thing and then you transmit that transmutate that feeling into something else like having a, a worry about something or anxiety about going to an interview and getting up out of your seat and just walking around changes mm -hmm. your energy or dancing or turning on some good music right that give you good vibes all of that changes the emotion of what you're feeling so you give yourself three seconds to think that negative thought and then you change the thought. I love it. I love it. So you're giving yourself permission because sometimes we try to shut it down and push it away and it's just not working. So you're saying go deeper into the thought for a period of time and then release it. I'm not saying go deeper. I'm saying think the thought for three seconds is it. Because most of the times what happens is we're unconscious. We go into a state of unconsciousness and we've been sitting there thinking and ruminating on something negative for 20 minutes, right? Mm. It started as one thought and then it turned into a movie. It's a video. You're walking down the street. You see yourself. You're reenacting. All of those things are happening. You start to feel your blood pressure rise, right? Mm. You're reliving the moment. Three seconds. Change it. That's giving. I mean, let's do it. Mm. One, two, three. That's it. And now you change that thought immediately. It's casting that thought down and changing the thought as soon as you can. That's a good point. You know, uh, I was just listening to some audios this morning. They were talking about negative thoughts. And when you have a negative thought, think about it like this. There's a little negative ball. Mm -hmm. And the, the more you hold on to that thought, the ball gets bigger and bigger yep. and bigger and bigger. And now you have this huge negative ball of energy. And what happens is uh, the ball of energy begins to attract 
situations, circumstances, and problems into your life that are consistent with the negative feeling and thought that you were thinking. And so to that point, the three second rule, get rid of it, think to a positive it. thought, and then that positive ball yes. begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now you're operating in a positive vibrational frequency. Because people are always asking why. Like, I mean, how? How do I do it? How do I do it? This is how you do it. You have these thoughts. You take control. You change the thought. And I need to point out the fact that it may, it may be a little bit of a, a, a tug of war. It might be a little bit of an arm wrestling match. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that the first time you change that thought, it's going to just go away. It might come back, and then mm -hmm. you got to turn it back off. So it's an active participation that you got to move into. Absolutely. Let's go to the next point. The next point is this. Learn to relax. Ooh. Sometimes we're just, ah, ah, ah. we're so frantic, and we're moving, and we're restless, and we haven't learned to relax. In fact, yeah. the word relax is a word that you can use. It is a, is a word, like for instance, we hear about triggers. I'm triggered. So there are trigger words, but then there are anchor words. Mm. Words that anchor you back in and give you your calm. And so when you intentionally practice relaxing and when you tell yourself, relax, mm. breathe, relax, it literally will calm you down. And it's not just relaxing your physical body, it's relaxing your mind because your mind is restless and all over the place. Many people who can't sleep at night, they're sleepless, why? Because their mind is constantly going. So you have to learn how to relax your mind and think less thoughts because every thought you think is a thought about the past or a thought about the future and you're constantly going back and forth and back and forth from past to future, past to future, past to future, past to future, past to future and you're robbing yourself of the moment. When you relax, you're in full awareness and mm -hmm. mindfulness to be able to make it through the rest I'm of the day. I'm one of those people, y'all, that struggles with uh, restless thoughts in my mind when I'm trying to sleep. Like, they just come on and, they, and they're and they playing. And re relaxing is the single most important thing that you can do. I will go to an app, it's called Melodies, and turn that app on and it starts to play a certain music and it'll start to throb a certain beat. And next thing you know, I am relaxed into a state of calm and I go to sleep. And sometimes we struggle with that thought. You got a thousand and one things to do. They're all just running around in your mind. But sometimes when you're struggling to turn the thoughts off, even mm -hmm. if they're good thoughts, like you're know, anticipating great things, you could just be excited like it's Christmas tomorrow, right? Get yourself to a state of relaxation that's going to help. Let, let me just say this. Um, mm -hmm. Gonzalez says, pertaining to the thoughts, casting down arguments and every high Ooh. thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bring every thought into captivity that's right. to the obedience of Christ. That's, that's in right, 1 Gonzalez. Corinthians 10, 5. That's it. Selah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Jill has a comment. She says, he's been trying in so many ways, so much better, yet... When he still lies, I shut down and still very offended all in this, all if this occurred. Okay, so we're, we're definitely going to, so we're, we're dealing with lies, right? And this is consistent with what we're hearing from other people. And we've talked, we actually did a phenomenal Q&A on lies and why people do it and how it impacts the relationship. And, and what that does, that can also cause more obsessiveness because, all right, all I know is that you keep lying to me. So I'm obsessed about finding out the truth. What is the truth? And if I can't get it from you, I'm going to find it some way. And this is how we have people contacting the fair partners, hiring prior detectives, just doing all types of things to unearth the truth. So a spouse, their willingness to participate in the recovery process can help the other partner with their obsessiveness. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's why this is this is some work, folks. And both of you have to be committed to the process. And the uh, the one who is the offender has a major part to play in how their spouse heals. Absolutely. And we're going to go to the next point. Learn the art of taking minute vacations. OK, so when you think about it, we're always wanting to go <coughs> take a three day, four day, seven day vacation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to pause and take minute vacation. You know what I call it? And I was talking to a friend about this yesterday. Mindfulness. Yesterday, it was like this perfect moment. There was nobody in the living room area. I think I don't know where you were. Oh, you were working with the couple. I came downstairs to get a cup of coffee. The kids had gone off to school and I had a minute. Mm. I got it. I went and got my coffee. I sat down. I opened up some books. I even made a post. Yes, you might have seen it. And I just took in the moment. 
Sometimes, y'all, we got to stop and, and smell the roses. We are running from pillar to post, stress to stress to stress. And when your partner is a major stressor and you have to deal with them, you got to sneak away and find those minute vacations. Sometimes it's in the bathtub. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I stood in the shower and that was my minute vacation, okay? Away from the stresses, away from the issues that we were having at certain times, in that shower, talking to God, praying and doing whatever I needed to do to get my life Find those spaces, guys. Mm. A walk around the corner, you know, sit in, the, in your car sometimes. I was talking mm. to my client about this the other day. They sometimes they just need to get away and the car mm. is a safe haven. You can play your music and there's no one around and there's a different kind of yeah. silence in the car. Yeah. So make sure that you take those moments, guys, to actually settle down, smell the roses and mm. be mindful. If you don't take those moments to retreat, then at some point you may want to just throw in the towel, wave the white flag and just retreat from everything. Mm -hmm. So having that is so critically important. Uh, we have another comment. Thank you so much for all the teaching you guys. Um, I believe that you have saved many individual lives and also marriages. I was in a critical state emotionally when God revealed your ministry to me. Awesome. That's what it's about. That's Thank what keeps us going. That. And we appreciate that. We're going to go into uh, the next point. Reward yourself. Listen, this is important because this is a journey, right? Think about a marathon. A marathon is different than a sprint. And in order for you to recover, there's a marathon journey that you're going to take. It's going to be for a while. And along the way, if you're only focused on the final destination, and only have in your mind the reward that comes at the very end, you may get, be, get discouraged. You may want to give up throwing the towel and call it quits because this is just too long. This is, this is just too hard. So you've got to build in a reward system along the journey. Yeah. Celebrate yourself for how far you've come, for how mm, well you're doing. Like if your partner won't celebrate you, celebrate yourself. Mm. You got to get around people who will build you up and encourage you and speak life into you. And taking rests and vacations and 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 retreating to to celebrate whatever that may my be language right now because i will celebrate myself you sure have will listen sometimes <laughs> sometimes when the when the heat gets too hot in the kitchen and you see how she just hit me like and that the this and the that and the you third, see that i will say listen babe it's been a while since i've been, done this though i need to get away for three days i need to go somewhere i don't care if it's down the street i need to check out because I am every woman, but I mean, I don't want to be every woman today. Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you've got to reward yourself by doing you. So make sure that you do that. Let's go to the next one. This is important. <clears throat> it says, well, I don't know where it is, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Make sure that you take... <laughs> sorry, am I skipping the order? I'm sorry, could you jump go, down to the Go with your flow. Go, okay. do, you, do you. Boo. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with the flow. I wasn't sure if you uh, had jumped it. Our notes. Okay, well, I'm just going to go here, guys, because I don't know where we're at in the list. Um, make sure that you take time for gratitude. Mm. Acknowledge the good things that you have going on. I think a lot of times what we do is we focus and we zero in on all of the things that are going wrong or even worse, we focus on the things that could go wrong, okay? That's even worse. Those are things that have not even happened. Make sure that you focus on the things that are going good. I tell all my clients every morning and every night, go through a list of at least 10 things that you're grateful for. I don't care if it's the use of your limbs. Make sure that you acknowledge it and thank God. Thank God I can wake up. Thank God I can see. Thank God there's a meal on the table. Thank God the lights are on. Thank God I'm healthy. Thank God I didn't end up in the hospital today. There are so many things that we could be grateful for which will overshadow Mm -hmm. the things that are going wrong or might which potentially may not go wrong in your world love it love it the next point all right now remember we're talking about how to stop obsessing the next point you've got to use the power of distraction mm. distraction can be a good thing like we, we we you know one of the things that we always say you don't want to live your life by distraction you want to live your life by design however distractions can be useful in the process while you're redesigning your life. Yeah. And so one way of looking at this is a lot of times when someone has been betrayed, all they're consumed with is what has happened. They stop eating. They struggle to sleep. They stop yep. socializing with their friends. 
They no longer want to watch anything on the television. So in essence, they're doing absolutely nothing, which gives them so much time to focus on the wrong thing. And sometimes you just got to get busy. You got to get busy doing something, right? So rather than, one thing I love about the Dawn Wall in that movie, if you've seen it, he was so obsessed about what happened in his previous relationship. And he said, I had to find something else to obsess about. And he obsessed about this wall, climbing this mountain. And so you've got to find something to throw yourself into, whether it's reading a good book, whether it's taking a class, whether it's starting a project around the house, whether it's pursuing, <coughs> I don't know, a new hobby or interest. There's got to be some distraction that keeps you busy while you begin to work on the blueprint of your life. I love it. You know what? Listen, guys, this is about how to overcome obsessing over the issues here. And there's some really powerful techniques that I have used and I did not know that I was using. There's this one powerful one called the shake your head technique. Mm. Now, have you ever noticed when you're going through something tough, you just be like, you know, you just, or have you ever noticed how um, apes, when they get all frustrated, they'll go like this? Like, yeah. you know, and you always wonder why they do that. There is something that happens in your body and the chemistry when you react in these ways. So the shake your head uh, technique, actually it's shaking the thoughts out of your head. It literally does that. It actually changes the chemistry in your body and it allows you to release the thought. Just like if you need to get grounded and you're feeling like lightheaded, you might put your feet on the ground or if you feel nauseous, you might breathe into a bag to calm down. Yeah. In the same way, shaking your head That's actually right. allows you to shake the thought Isn't out of your head. Powerful? So try that. When you feel frustrated, when you're angry and you're really going through, just like how the ape will beat on his chest to build up his, um, like the energy and yeah. the, 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 what is that um, the hormone that makes you run real fast? Adrenaline? The adrenaline. Yeah. It builds up the adrenaline. Shaking your head actually allows you to shake and mm. release the thought. So that's a technique. Try it. See if it works for you. And the last thing is, guys, thought stopping, right? And it goes back to the scripture that Gonzalez shared about casting down the thoughts. Mm -hmm. When the thought comes, you just got to stop it and you've got to thought shift. You got to take that negative thought and shift it to something positive. So for all of you who have actually written down all the negative thoughts about yourself, about your spouse, about your marriage, about the affair, what you then want to do is write a counter response to the negative thought. You've got to counter act that thought. You need counter intelligence to deal with that thought. So when the thought comes, you're already preparing for it. You're waiting for it. You know it's coming. You're not caught off guard. You're not sideswiped. You're anticipating it. Like, yeah. come on, come on. Yeah. I'm ready for you right. because when you come, I got something for you. I got a new thought. And what happens is that thought goes away and then you become so focused on that new thought yeah. and you think that thought, not just in a reactionary response type way, but proactively, you're going to think these thoughts in the morning. Yes. You're going to think these thoughts at night. You're going to create positive affirmations and, and, and you're going to think it so much that it becomes so soaked and saturated into your mind. That is the new thought and you're vibrating on that frequency. So when, when those thoughts come, those negative thoughts come, like bullets that came at Neo, he just held his hand up and those Boom, bullets fell to the ground. Down. And that's exactly what and you, you know what? Hear. If you struggle to come up with a counter thought to protect yourself, the easiest, most powerful thought or response is, I am enough. Mm. Power. Shut it down. Wow. I am enough. Because your voice is in there telling you, you ain't no good. You did this, you did that. You, it's reminding you of everything that you aren't, everything that you did, dragging you to your past. Response, I am enough. Period. That's the Couples Academy show, guys. I hope you got something out of today's message. 10 ways to overcome obsessing about the affair. We'll see you tomorrow for Relationship Q&A. Love you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.